Hello there, listeners. This is Shelley Dax, your host for the Tattoo Sisterhood Revolution. Today, we'll be speaking with tattoo artist Joshua South. But before we dive in with Joshua, let's go over really quickly what we're doing here. In this free virtual series, my intention is to create a safe space for artists to discuss getting into the tattoo industry or amping up your beginning tattoo career. These folks understand what a crazy journey it is and how difficult it can be for women and minorities. Myself, along with this group of talented speakers, are revealing our ups and downs, our stumbles and bumps along the way to uh, hopefully give you a helping hand at the start of your adventure in tattooing. I would encourage you to listen to all the sessions as there is a well-rounded bit of guidance and who knows, something you hear could change the direction of your life. Every morning, we'll send you an email with a link to the interviews of the day, so keep an eye out for that. And now today, I'm so happy to be talking with tattooer, my colleague in the beautiful state of Oregon, Joshua South. Joshua started tattooing 27 years ago in Germany, where he spent the first eight years of his career struggling to understand technique and tattoo application. He traveled through Florida, Missouri, Vegas, and Montana before landing in Oregon 14 years ago. He shows up to work early and often meditates after lighting candles to create the setting, slowing down and taking time for the moment, feeling a great sense of responsibility for the quality of his tattoos, but also the quality of time he, his clients spend with him. Questions are at the forefront of his mind while he works, questions such as, why have they chosen this particular piece of art? What does it mean to them? And what are they hoping to let go of or process emotionally that day? Doing a great tattoo while simultaneously making the experience memorable, fun, and healing is considered a successful day in his eyes. So hello, Joshua. Hi, Shelly. How Thanks are for you? having me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you today. This all sounds so amazing. But first, let's start by talking about your beginnings and why you decided 27 years ago to tattoo and how did you happen to find yourself in Germany? Well, I was in the military and um, my ex-wife at the time, she suggested that I started tattooing because I was into drawing and art. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, knew nothing about tattooing. This is back before the internet or there was no <laughs> YouTube or any, any way to learn. And uh, we literally ordered Huck Spaulding's How to Tattoo A to Z, the book. The book. And, <laughs> yeah. And got us one of those kits and had it sent over to Germany. And I... I mean, it's like quite literally painted a sign that said Tattoo Studio, which is Tattoo Studio in German, <laughs> and put it on the front door. And that very same day, the doorbell rang and my heart jumped to my chest. And it was <laughs> a young woman wanted a rose on her butt. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, yeah. I, to say that I was scared would be an understatement. <laughs> For sure. My my hand was shaking so bad. I remember that I uh, I I was doing this the stem of the rose, which has two parallel lines. There became a third line <laughs> that um, <laughs> I could I never quite was able to to join them. It, it was a mess. It was a mess, and sure. I was nervous. And um, but I did my best. And quite frankly, nobody in nobody knew any better back then. Uh -huh. um, uh, my clients, my clients told me that I was great, and before long, I was brainwashed into thinking I was great. And, <laughs> uh, Isn't it funny how clients, uh, most of the time, they love their own tattoos, right? They they're not going to say much bad about their own tattoos that you've given them. Well, yeah, and especially back then, I mean, there was there was no one to compare myself to. Sure. Um, there was there was one other tattoo artist in the area, um, and uh, like the photograph quality was bad. The 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 level of art was it's it's just it's nothing like it is today. Mm -hmm. And um, in my mind, the first the first ten or twelve years of my tattoo career, I I really thought I was. 
I thought I was the best, you know, I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was so good back then. Nice. And I remember it wasn't until probably about, probably about 10 or 12 years ago, I, I got on Facebook and I was like, holy oh, crap. Oh God. Yeah. I got on Facebook and I was shocked to see the things that people were creating in the world. And um, for a moment there, I, I really started to doubt myself and started to feel like, especially since for so many years, I had felt so confident and I felt <laughs> I had felt so um, secure in what I was doing. Then all of a sudden I started to doubt myself and I went through, I went through a little bit of depression and uh, self-doubt and, and worry that I was, you know, in the right place and what I was actually doing with my, with myself and my career. Mm -hmm. And for a moment there, I don't know, it kind of shook me up pretty bad in a way, but in, in, in another way, it, um, it motivated me, you know, it, it, um, what, what I noticed, what, or what it seems to me is that every, everyone is, accelerating each other in in amazing ways in the mm -hmm. tattoo industry because we're looking at we're looking at what our friends are doing and what people across the world are doing and everyone's sharing what they're doing and um it's, there's so it's, much it, access to 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 be able to see other people's art all around the world that it is, it's, it's quite, it is motivating, but it's, yeah, like you say, sometimes you're like, oh man, I'm never going to get, you know, be able to do yeah. that. Um, Jake Meeks, actually, uh, one of the other speakers talked about him, uh, he and other artists call it the gap, where you are always behind somebody, right? <laughs> there's, there's always a gap. Right. <laughs> Right, and and uh, we can't beat ourselves up, you know, but use it, like you say, for motivation to get better. Absolutely. Yeah. And then your, your, your clients are bringing in images that you're just like, wow, how did that artist do that? And then the clients sitting there like, well, you can do it too, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? And so you got to try to figure out how, how to recreate these things. And it, it really puts that beautiful pressure on you to become better. Yes, for sure. So that is actually also, it brings up another point about how like with Instagram, Facebook and all that, that um, people manipulate their photos to look so much better than what they really are. <laughs> and that presents a problem too, when clients bring something in, they're like, do this for me. And you're like, well, no tattoo is really going to shine quite like that, you know? Well, you know, another thing about that too, Shelly, is um, I have, I have been in the presence of other artists that think that they're supposed to manipulate their photos because it, it's becoming so common that, you know, people do it with their, uh, their profile pictures, a picture of their face, you know, selfie or whatever. It's so common for people to use filters that it's, it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been around tattoo artists that, they they run their tattoos through a series of filters just automatically without without even thinking about it and um they they don't they don't think there's anything wrong with it it's becoming it's becoming so common that you know it's almost like you have to do that in order to in order to keep up with everyone else. Yeah, you know, like to get business. noticed. Sure, that makes sense. It's kind of hard though. I mean, it, it, I'm torn too because obviously I'm not the greatest photographer and I have tried like a million different lights and setups and this and that, whatever, trying to figure out how to get my, you know, photography of my tattoos to look better. Um, but at some point I'm just like, oh, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever keep up. Um, there is an Instagram account called tattooed truth fairy have you seen that one? Oh yeah oh I yeah <laughs> i do too it's so good it has the before and after and it just shows you the truth of what a tattoo really looks like without the filters so you know it's interesting it's interesting the things that are changing in our industry so but to go back let's go back to when you first were you know you were struggling kind of on your own and you didn't really have any kind of assistance when did you ever get like uh people to help train you or did you ever have any person you worked under or anything like that at all? 
Um, I actually didn't. I I struggled through everything the slow way. I remember I was tattooing for about four years, uh, my first four years of my career. And one day I was, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to clean my tattoo machine up and, um, you know, get it all polished up. And I took it apart and put it back together. And I didn't, I never put it back together right. I didn't know anything about machine tuning. And I quite honestly spent the next five years of my career tattooing much slower and struggling even harder because I couldn't get the ink to go in the skin very well. I couldn't mm. get the color to saturate. I couldn't mm-hmm. get my lines clean. Uh, there was no one around me. There was no one, um, like I said, to, to compare myself to. I wasn't sitting with another tattoo artist. And it, it literally took it took me a couple of years before I finally started to realize that my machine wasn't stroking correctly. Mm. Um, it wasn't tuned right. Uh, it, it, it's amazing how much time I wasted. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure there's a ton of people that are going through similar things, particularly in areas where there's no regulation, there's no tattoo school, there's no apprenticeships available or, you know, whatever. I'm sure people are struggling the same way. I've seen it myself. I've seen a lot of people struggle the same way you did back then, even, even though there's so much more available now. Yeah. And, um, gosh, it's, it's, it's so hard to, um, it's so hard to articulate and put into words. Um, because when you're, when you're tattooing, the, you're, you're working with a machine So you have to begin to move mechanically and you have to, you have to get your, your arms and your fingers to move in a mechanical stroke and, and you have to time yourself and, and, and link yourself into the equipment that you're using in Mm -hmm. in a, in a way that, that harmonizes the movement of your body with, with the machine that you're using. If you're, if your hand move sporadically then you're going to get choppy strokes your shading is not going to be smooth it's it's uh it it can take years and years of trial and error or it can take a few moments sitting down with the right person and they say things in just the right way and it clicks in your mind and mm-hmm. you can take a quantum leap from one day to the next where where you're saturating suddenly. Oh, yeah. With with perfection and everything is like solid and smooth and crisp and clean or or again or like I like I was saying you you could go through years and years of not quite getting it. Um yeah. I the like the hands- idea of the quantum leap, you know, and finding uh, someone to help you with just, you know, a few words or just a demonstration or something that finally makes sense to you. Because I, I like you, even though I did go to a tattoo school in Oregon, you know, over 14 years ago, um, did not learn nothing hardly there. <laughs> and right. uh, so I struggled a lot in the beginning too. And that was, you know, again, probably just a bit before there were YouTube videos and anything else, you know, and I struggled a lot in the beginning too. Same idea. As well as with coil machines, I'm not a mechanically inclined person. So I struggled a lot with that too. Um, Tuning them correctly and putting them back together, just like you said, sounds so familiar. And uh, I think for me, my tattooing, you know, took off more so both when I got into rotaries and then also art fundamentals made a huge difference for me too. Yeah, I agree. And um, I, I actually, when I, when I transitioned from coils into rotaries, I went through three years of chewing up the skin and um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how you know, the, the way, the way your hand and your arm and your mind align themselves with the equipment that you're using. If it is, if it doesn't all harmonize correctly and work in sync then you're going to get you're going to get choppy like you're going to cut the skin up you're going to move too slow and and um, damage the skin surface or you'll move too fast and there'll be choppy um, peppered strokes everywhere and it looks 
you know, hot, the skin looks hot and beaten up, you know, you really, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot to it, you know, <laughs> steep <laughs> learning curve, right? <laughs> there really is. And, and you go through, or, or I did anyways, I went through stages where, where I, I, I get tuned into the, the, the machine that I'm using and the needles that I'm using and the ink that I'm using and um, everything seems to be going for a while, and then somehow something changes, and it's it's e- it's even hard to pinpoint what exactly changed, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't seem to be working as well anymore. And then you get a new machine, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is this is so much better!" And you know, you're <laughs> like, "Well, why is it better?" And be like, "I don't know. It's just, it's better." You know? Oh my gosh, I know. There was so many times in the middle of a tattoo where it's like. Something just happened and I don't know exactly what it is, but I got to cop and say, change my needle, do something, you know, when things have been going fine, I get it. It's crazy, right? It's just so many little subtle things. It really is. And, um, you know, so what, what do you think makes one artist successful and another not so much? Well, I, I've thought about that a lot, actually. Um, one of the things that I find one of the things I would say it makes one artist successful over another artist is some artists will be okay with how it looks and they'll leave it that way where another artist will see a line that has just a little bit of an edge that's a little blurry and they'll go in and sharpen it they'll they'll look real closely at the saturation and they'll see it's not quite coming up to the to the very edge of of where it should be and they'll get in there and they'll saturate it or there'll be a little spot that's that's a little rough and they'll get in there and they'll smooth it out you know i you spend you know four or five hours working on a piece and then you get up and take a break clear your mind come back sit down and get back in there and sharpen it all out or do you just be like "Eh, it's good enough Mm, you know I, i i yeah, I really think there's there's a, you know, there's there's that space that a person has where they're where they're like they're just not satisfied. It's got to be a little bit better, and they take the time, they slow themselves down, they you know, like I said, take a break, shake it off for a second, get back in there, and they and they go the extra mile to make the tattoo look even better. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that's that's definitely one aspect of of what makes an artist better than another artist and uh, another thing that i think is really important is understanding what well what i what i you know a lot of a lot of times refer referred to the four laws of art um and i like to i like to talk about it and think about it when i'm doing my tattoos Mm -hmm. and that is um that is uh so give us those four laws of art. <laughs> yeah. Well, from, 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 from my understanding, from my perspective, yeah, there, there's, it's the one third, two third rule. Mm-hmm. And they say they, they, you know, it's not necessarily a rule, but it's more like a guide. Yes. Um, and you see it, you see it with layout all the time. If you look at any magazine or any book, um, you'll see that two thirds of the image two thirds of the way it's laid out, like, like the image itself will cover two thirds of the area and there'll be a third that's kind of blank or kind of left out or two thirds of the image will be colored where one third of it is uh, more simplified or light and two thirds will be dark. So, so you, you basically always want something to dominate in the image. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it, it, goes with the layout and you see that mostly mostly with uh magazines or book covers and and you can do this you can you can picture that with the skin as well where you know say say you're working with someone's upper arm um if you cover the entire upper arm generally you know if if if, if they're uh they say you go from the elbow to the shoulder right mm-hmm artistically you're going to want to cover like two thirds of that instead of like filling up the entire canvas got it yep. tech you know artistically that's going to appear better at a glance 
Yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask you too, because you had mentioned this before, what the most important thing is uh, for a tattoo to look good at a glance. Right. At a glance. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll, get into, we'll get into that in a second, but okay. Um, so with layout, it's kind of, it's, it's not as, it's not as prominent as it is with in tattooing as it is with like, say a, a book cover or something mm-hmm. like that. Layout, layout comes into effect with like a book cover or, or magazine cover or a calendar or something like that, or, or a picture you're putting on a canvas you can really see the way the way an image is laid out. So once, so you, so so a two, one third two third ratio comes into effect there. But with tattooing, there you want to take the one third two third with um, light versus dark, um, warm versus cool colors, and detail versus calm areas. So when you get into light versus dark you you basically you want when you look at the image you want it to you know either two-thirds of the image be dark and one-third be light or one-third of the image be light and two-thirds of it be dark and you do the same thing with your warm colors versus cool colors Mm -hmm. and it's really important in my opinion when it comes to coloring because um a lot of tattoos do have color and I allow I allow the, that thought to guide me while I'm coloring something. Yeah. So if two thirds of the image is cool, like you you have like blues and greens, um, and 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 some purples. If you have if you have two thirds of the image are is cool and one third of the image is warm, that allows that allows the cool colors to dominate and pop out the warm colors and you do the same thing with with uh light versus dark and you do Mm -hmm. the same thing with with detail versus calm imagine if the entire image is detailed if there's just detail everywhere the detail kind of kills itself you know what i'm saying yes 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 Uh, i I talk to my students about this stuff all the time Yes, it's so yeah. important when you look at uh, w- when you look at tattoo magazines and stuff. You see this a lot, where it's just so much busyness and so overly detailed um, that you just it's like hard to see what's really there, what's going on, what's the focal point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you want to you want to stick something calm next to something detailed so you can see that detailed part, you know, or or you'll you'll like punch a, a big section of. Um, cool colors in there like say a big field of blue and you'll strategically pop like some warm oranges or reds right in that right next to all that blue to make that red come out you put all the blue next to it Mm -hmm. yeah contrast yeah makes the tattoo so much more successful what you're talking about this is the contrast of light dark detail versus calm warm versus cool blurry versus you know straight uh very yeah very important i feel like to make a successful tattoo for sure yeah and i mean so so wait so that so the first law is the thirds and then what's the second law well the 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 the, the, well i would i I guess i was kind of calling them the four laws oh all of those (laughs) got it yeah the layout the layout and the layout's one law the warm versus cool is the second check detail versus calm that's how i was seeing it in my mind nice, I, yeah. yeah and I, I i really try to pay attention to trying to collect the those ideas too and when i say collect i try to collect all of my dark in one area and i set it next to an area that's like so say if i can if i can get the image to be two-thirds of the image to be dark and have that two-thirds be collected in one area and then I set the light next to it collected. That usually gives me the strongest, most powerful punch. You know, so again, I do the same thing with 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 uh, my warm tones versus my cool tones. If I've got like a, a large field of of cool tones set next to a small area of warm tones, then it, then it has the most punch. But if it's like evenly spread out you know, where the lights all, um, 
you know, if there if there's a little bit of light everywhere, it doesn't seem it does it doesn't really seem to grab the eye. And it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe talking about it. It's much easier if you can like see. No, I get you. And, it's easier to like yeah demonstrate it or show it. How did you learn all of this yourself? Well, that part I that part I actually I was tattooing for about twenty years, and an art teacher. I went to a painting class and this woman explained it to me nice. and blew my mind uh-huh. when I, when, yeah. When I, and now whenever I'm putting together a tattoo or when I'm thinking about my colors, um, I, I always think about that. I always think about um, something dominating in the image. So when, I, so if I'm, so when, if I'm going to do a color tattoo, the, the, the literally the first, strongest most important thing i think about is which color is going to be in this tattoo the most i choose a color like and usually i just ask the customer what's your favorite color mm-hmm. yeah you know? easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so they tell me what their favorite color is and i say okay th- their favorite color is blue then then 60 percent of or or even 65 percent or maybe even 70 percent of that image is going to be in blue tones Mm-hmm. And I and I quite literally, you know, I'll use I use a lot of uh, muted tones in my in my artwork, and I try and I try to, um, you know, make 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 that one color dominate in the image because if I can, if I can get that color to dominate in the image, then it's going to make the other colors that I put in there pop. What I was the problem I was running into before was. Um, I would just color stuff in willy nilly style and I wouldn't mm-hmm. pay attention to like how much space each color is taking up in the image, you know? So, so, so if somebody it, wants to know, like um, if somebody wants to know the basics, the fundamentals of that kind of art language and principles of design, um, where do you recommend that they would go to like get those very basic things? Do you, I mean, you heard it from a, from a painting class, I heard it also from an art teacher and then, you know, pulled some books and stuff to start studying it myself. Do you have anything like that to recommend to people? I don't have a specific resource that I could recommend. Okay. Well, we're going to try to figure that out and put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I have some of that kind of stuff in my book, but it's actually just the, the you know, just sort of introductory for sure. Um, and but you know what? I think I will try to figure this out so that I can make that as a little resource guide for the, for the audience because this is crucial. This is really important to like really take your tattoos to the next level. It really is. And um, on the on the topic you had mentioned earlier about um, making tattoos look good at a glance, um, for me, this is paramount. It's it's one of the most important things that I consider while preparing a tattoo to be put on to somebody is I think about tattoos being viewed and tattoos are always viewed at a glance. When you walk up, when you walk up to somebody, you look up at, you glance at their body and you see their tattoo. Mm -hmm. So to me, the most important thing is that a tattoo looks good at a glance. And in, in, in the way to make it look good at a glance is to have the, the shape of the tattoo form fit the person's body mm-hmm. to make it to make it look stylish and add fluid movement to the line to the natural lines of their body. And again, you want you you basically um, you want to think about like how much how much does that tattoo cover of their skin surface? You know, if it, if it, if it covered, like, so say, say you glance at somebody's arm, if it, if it overpowers the, the structure of their body and, um, Mm -hmm. and basically like disappears into, into all of their body, then it, then it kind of, um, it does, how do I say, um, it, it kind of floods their skin and, and detracts from the natural lines of their body. So what I, what yeah, I try to do sense. is I try to, yeah, I try to, I try to make sure that, that the size of the tattoo fits the body part and flows into the natural lines of their body. So that when it, so that when you glance at the tattoo, it looks stylish 
-hmm. and it adds to the symmetry and the natural lines of their body. That will then draw the viewer in to ask questions about the tattoo because because at a glance it looks it looks stylish it looks yeah it looks it looks good on them you know yeah so that's that, something so. that I find really important too and and I think even during as a tattoo artist during your appointment if you have somebody get up and walk kind of like you know five six feet away from you and take a look even you can kind of tell then like am I going in the right direction here is this working can I tell what it is from Mark six feet away you know yeah exactly does it look like does it look like smeared oil on their skin right. <laughs> <laughs> or or does it look like a you know a piece of art well let's talk about what equipment you're using right now and what you know why you chose it or what you know in, just like inks and power supply needles machine what you're using right now um right now i'm using this the stigma edge x um and I like it because it's it's got a little bit of give, but it's got just the right amount of give. And I, you know, like I said, most of my career, I was working with coils. Mm -hmm. And coils, I'm realizing now, for me, in the way my hand moves, have too much give. Mm -hmm. And that bounce, that bounce, when it kind of like, it, it's, it was just too much wobble. It was too much vibration. And I didn't even, I didn't realize that until until I got a machine that didn't have as much give a machine that has like no give, like, a, um, you know, like I'm having a brain fart now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a machine that has no give, it, it seems to damage the skin. It seems to, for me, for me, mm -hmm. it just seems it's, it's too powerful. And it, um, I like machines that have just a tiny bit of give and, um, let's the Stigma Edge X for me is is it works just right. Mm -hmm. It's got a, it's got a tiny bit of give, so it's kind of like a coil, but you know. And what about your needles? What are you using for needles? Oh, geez, I've been using. Um, I was using T Tech for a long time because mm -hmm. they were the only they were the only cartridge system out there. Um, but uh, Quantum. Um, gosh, I don't know why I'm, I'm quantum. No, I'm trying to think. Is it Cheyenne? I was using Cheyenne for a while. I don't know why. Quadrant. 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 There you go. Quadrant. Yeah, cool. I'm sorry. I'm no, it's sorry. cool. Yeah, I'm having a total brain fart on that. <laughs> And those are also right. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and those are um, also disposable cartridges, correct? Yeah, I'm using yeah. disposable cartridges on everything. Nice. And uh, what about your power supply? Um, I went battery. I'm going oh, with nice. the battery. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like yeah, it's a lot easier. The cordless, the the batteries they have now are they're not that expensive. They're like forty bucks. Nice. I'm um, just getting them on anim Amazon and they last about five hours. I can't tell you, I can't remember what the name of the battery is that I'm using. It's just a regular Amazon battery, super cheap, lasts about five hours. I got two of them. Cool. Plug it in, throw it on the back of the machine. I feel like a battery supply is more of a consistent energy source because it, it's like uh, a battery is feels pressurized, like the energy is like got pressure behind it somehow so it's oh, you're noticing all kinds of interesting little things <laughs> well yeah like a battery have you ever tried to charge your phone with a battery mm -mm. it seems to be more powerful doesn't it mm. oh i see what you mean yeah yeah it's 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 like a it's got like a pressurized power source and it and it seems to give a consistent push versus sucking energy from a wall i don't know if that makes sense or <laughs> or if that's just something i'm making up in my mind well but. you know we do make up a lot of stuff don't we <laughs> no who knows yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so okay let's switch gears just a little bit and uh okay i i think i remember you used to teach also tattooing did you I or did. Did, have you had apprentices or what what have you done Yes, I've actually, I've taught probably 30 people to tattoo over the years. Wow. And I really enjoyed it. 
I really enjoyed it because um, I've also taught um, MMA, um, Muay Thai and boxing and all those things. And what I noticed about teaching is that when you try to articulate things, you learn them better, you know, mm, it, it, it forces yeah. you to figure it out for yourself. Absolutely. That happens to me all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I definitely found a lot of joy in that, but then after a while it, you know, it became, it became like, it, 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 well, you, there's a great responsibility you have if you're going to teach someone. True. So you can't just kind of like teach them halfway and then walk away. You know, you gotta, you gotta always be there for them. And if you're not, able to commit to that level then you probably shouldn't be teaching anybody (laughs) (laughs) you know so i I found i found myself um kind of struggling to have enough time to do tattoos and do them well versus teaching and all that That so yeah. yeah i felt like i needed to choose one or the other and so i decided to step away from teaching Mm -hmm. but I, i might i might mess with it again you never know Okay. All right. We'll have to call you up and see if you want to teach a class at my school. (laughs) I definitely would be down. I would definitely be down to teaching classes. That'd be fun. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have to commit to the whole thing. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. It'd be like, it's like having a grandkid. You can pop in. Oh, yes. You just (laughs) speak in my language. (laughs) Love my grandkids. They're so awesome. Um, Okay. So what do you think that it, it, what does it take to build a solid and successful career? Like financially as well as a tattooer? Well, one of the things that, uh, well, one of the things I would teach when I would teach tattooing is um, I believe that tattooing is, is uh, maybe maybe 50 percent of the actual tattoo and 50 percent of the experience the client has while they're getting tattooed Mm -hmm. and you could even go further and say that it's maybe like 40 percent of the image and 60 percent the experience yeah so that's what you were saying before um experience the experience of getting tattooed is more important than how the tattoo looks you said something like that so when you want to explain that a little bit more yeah because I mean, think about it this way. If, and this is an extreme example, but um, if your child draws something for you, you, you freaking love it. You know, your, your right. kid drew it, <laughs> your kid drew it because you love that person. Uh, a tattoo is, is kind of the same way. Um, if you really like somebody, then when you look down at the piece of art that they created, you, you tend to like it because you like that person. Mm-hmm. And the uh, and the exact opposite can be true. I, I've seen it happen where, you know, somebody's super rude. You know, the person getting doing the tattoo is just too cool for you. Um, <laughs> they they say things that are inappropriate. They they you know they act like a hot shot. They're arrogant, and um, they do the most amazing tattoo on you ever. And you walk out. You're walking down the street. Somebody walks up and says, oh my God, that tattoo is, it's just, it's just incredible. And the person looks down and is like, yeah, but one eye is bigger than the other one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they find something in the tattoo that they yes. don't like because, because they don't like the person that, you know what, them. that's funny. One of the other speakers talked about that too, about the experience and how, um, if somebody is saying, you say, you know, someone says, oh, that's an awesome tattoo, but your thing is, oh, yeah, but the guy who did it or, you know, the girl who did it was just an asshole or, you know, something, then that's what it becomes, the story of that instead of, you know, exactly. their, their beautiful art. <laughs> so, yes, and that takes me back then to the idea of how you you set the stage, you light candles, you meditate and, you know, whatever, and, and focus on your client. I love that. Talk about that a little bit more. Well, I honestly, this, this part of this part of tattooing is, is my entire focus now. I mean, I, I really, I really take care of myself and I, and I try to do the best work I can. And I feel like I'm doing the best work that I ever have in my life these days, but probably about five years ago, I started to tune into the actual process of tattooing and and the experience the client has. Mm -hmm. I started to notice that 
um, I, I started to become more aware of the fact that while I'm tattooing somebody, um, something magical happens. You know, when when someone comes in to get a tattoo, I don't I don't care how tough or how cool that person is. When they come in to get a tattoo, they are vulnerable, and all the walls come down. When the, when the needle hits the skin, all the endorphins and the pain floods their body, and they open up. You know, they, they, they start to expose themselves and they, or they, they, they feel exposed Mm -hmm. and they open up to, to that moment. And they, most of the time when people come in to get a tattoo, they are trying to, you know, maybe they lost somebody that they love or, or, or they're trying to, um, they're trying to memorialize something or they're expressing something about some part of their life. You know, there, there's always a story behind the mm-hmm. tattoo. Yeah, you know, there's, you there's, know. yeah, there's, there's always some emotions that are associated with the tattoo. And sometimes, sometimes those are emotions, those emotions run deep, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're there's, there's, there's always something going on spiritually and emotionally about the tat, you know, that that's why they're getting, they're getting a tattoo. I mean, some people are there for just to get the image, you know, but I think that's less common. I think what's more common is, is, um, there's something going on with that person. They're suffering in some way. There's, there's something happening in their life. And what I began to notice is that while I'm giving that tattoo to that person, it's not just it's just, it's not just the piece of art that I'm putting on them. It's, it's the experience that they're having while they're getting tattooed. And I really started to pay more and more attention to what I say to them Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, realizing that a special moment is happening. And in that moment, I have the opportunity to heal them, to help them almost like, like a, like a modern day shaman. You know, I, I, if, if, if I take that moment seriously and slow down and, you know, just ask them questions, pay attention to them, um, make it about them, you know? Yeah. Uh, I love that. You know, uh, probably about six or seven years ago myself, I decided during the time that I was setting up my station, that would be the time that I would take deep breaths and really think about the client and really slow down and then start the tattoo that way. Because before that, I was always, you know, rushed or nervous or had something else going on or bills to pay or, you know, whatever, running a shop is difficult. Um, But that just making that setting up the station thing like meditative was a huge help for me too to be able to focus in on the, on the client and their experience. That's great. And then you, you mentioned um, shamanism or whatever, you know, that's, interesting because so many people do say that they go get a tattoo because it's like going to a therapist it's like being able to have the time to chat and and people who even don't talk very much sometimes will talk a lot more during a tattoo yeah and i mean um it it, it, i mean it's a fact i mean that that's that's that that gateway presents itself and and if you if you're keen to it if you become aware of it as a tattoo artist, it's another way for you to embrace um, embrace the situation and take your art and the experience to another level. You, you yes. mentioned earlier, you know, about what makes one artist successful versus another artist, or you know, like how can you become success successful and make tattooing a career? And in my opinion, you know, doing a good tattoo preparing your art, rehearsing your image, all those things are important. Um, but I find it even more important that you are on time. You brush your teeth, <laughs> you, know, you clean your tattoo station. Yes. Um, you, know, you know, you show up and you're present and you pay attention to the client. If, if you, if you spend that extra time to just be present and be focused in on them, I'm telling you that that right there is going to make you successful. You know what? You know, this is really interesting, Joshua, because a lot of the people that I have talked to on on these and, and interviewed, 
they are of that same mind, which is neat that it's really changing in this world, you know, in our, in our industry, there are a lot more people that are really thinking about the experience of the, of the client. Um, There's one lady in California who set up her shop almost like a salon in a way or a spa or something. And she even has like a little garden and stuff outside. Yeah. You know, so clients can go out there when they're taking their breaks and, you know, just the thought and that does make you stand out uh, from the pack for sure to to give that much thought to that experience of the client. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I subconsciously started to do it originally, but then I, I went through some, I went through some really bad issues with anxiety personally and, um, I, I went through struggles with my mind and depression and all these things. And then, and that, that kind of motivated me to start paying attention to my thoughts more. And then, it, then it started to spill over into what, what is my client thinking? You know um, what, what, you know, I started listening to, to listening to feedback over the years of, of, of uh, different experiences people have had while they're getting tattooed. Yeah. And, everything. And, I, and I, you know, and I started to realize that, you know, I mean, when, when that pain hits their body and it, it blows them open, you know what I mean? They're, they're, yes. <laughs> they're, I mean, and I've experienced that myself when I'm getting tattooed. Have you? Oh yeah. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Yeah. It's quite an experience. <laughs> you become hypersensitive to sounds mm-hmm. to, you know, to like aggressive behaviors or conversations and stuff. I, you really, to be a successful tattoo artist, you really have to take all that into consideration and, um, and facilitate that environment for your client. If you, if you do that, if you, if you become aware of that and you start to clue into it and start to interact with it in a way that's, you know, where, where you're paying attention to these things and you're curating that experience for your clients, you know, whether, whether it be like, like I've got, I've got, um, a monitor set up like big screen monitors. So that, so if they, if they want to watch a movie or if Mm -hmm. they want to listen to music that they like to listen to, you know, um, everything's clean and orderly. It, it's, uh, it's comfortable. I've got privacy. I've got a setup where, where they, where their friends can sit close by and talk with him if they want to. I just, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I just realized that it's not about me. It's about them. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. I love the way you described this. It reminds me of um, a quote, and I'm not sure I'm going to get this quite right, but it was something like to exist just for yourself is meaningless. And you can achieve yes. more satisfaction when you feel related to some greater purpose in life, something greater than yourself. Um, and you're saying even ch- achieve not just satisfaction, but more success when you know when you connect to something like that that's really awesome. yeah and that and, and 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 you know that is also like uh it's a secure way to approach the experience you know like like if i if 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 i let go of if i let go of myself and i focus on them i'm i can almost guarantee that i will be successful you know yes. what i mean it, it's yes. instead of yeah it's, and you, you don't, and you don't even have to try to figure that part out you just observe Mm-hmm. You just observe like, well, and, and you ask questions, you just explore them and pay attention to them and, and facilitate an experience for them. You know, so you, you, you go in, you go in serving and the, and the result will be, will be meaningful and it will be, you pretty much can guarantee you'll be successful. You know, if you're, if you're lost in your own self and you're consumed with Mm, being a hotshot, like you said earlier, something like that, which, you know, in this modern world, there are a lot of people that are really consumed with that, particularly because Instagram is like the artist's portfolio mostly these days. And, you know, the way you look, the way you, you know, present yourself and all of that, it's become such an obsession that yeah. it's like let's stop honestly and think like you're saying about the client <laughs> what do they want what's important to them i love that you you brought that up because i think a lot of newcomers to the industry you know they they might get more trapped in the idea of thinking okay my skills have to be amazing like this my instagram has to be amazing everything you know and then 
it's all about me, 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 and how do I get there, you know? But you're saying, no, absolutely. You can be successful when you are really thinking about being connected to other people. You know, and, I, and I've seen it. Um, I've seen I've seen certain artists that are not that not that good at tattooing. Admittedly, like they admit to the you know they admit to themselves they're not mm-hmm. very good at tattooing. But what they do, um, you know, here here's something you can do. For instance, you can like after like after a, a person after you're done tattooing, have a little notebook, and in your notebook write down. Uh, maybe what their pet's name was, or maybe, maybe you, maybe they said something about their aunt having cancer Mm, mm -hmm. or, you know, um, you know, their favorite car that they were working on, what was, what it was, make, make, make notes about, about the tattoo procedure so that when that client contacts you in the future, you can go back to your notebook and be, and ask about their aunt. Oh, that is such a great piece of advice. I love that. It, it really, it, I mean, it, and well, what I do is I have a notebook that I write down. I write down notes in that. And I also write down the notes, of what, co- what colors I use. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have, so if you're colors. doing a huge piece, you definitely have to remember yeah. what dang colors you use for sure. Yeah. So like taking notes about, about the experience <laughs> and being able to, and being able to, um, because nothing makes a client feel more loved and appreciated than being remembered, you know? Yeah. So, so let me ask you some, let's, let's switch gears a little bit again. And let me ask you, um, so you've been in this business a long time. And so you've seen, you know, the uh, sort of bullying culture, the sort of, you know, I'm a rock star culture and all of that. And um, since this is Tattoo Sisterhood Revolution, I was wondering if you could speak to, you know, what you've noticed about women and minorities getting into the tattoo industry and how they've been treated and maybe what's changed or what you think might need to change? Well, I may not be, I may, I may not be, uh, I, I might not have like the best advice for this particular top, for that part, particular part. Um, because most of the time I've, every shop that I've been in, I've pretty much been an owner of, <laughs> I was uh, gonna say you're the you are a white male owner of a tattoo shop and you have lots of tattoos and could per, be perceived as you know just from a glance as scary or you know intimidating or something like that so I think it's great that you know getting to know you it, it's it's not true at all about you well <laughs> and you were you were mentioning um <laughs> From my experience, I haven't I haven't really experienced a lot with um, minorities or women because the environment that I that I facilitate in my tattoo shop is one where that that stuff does not exist. You know, so um, the women the women that I've had working for me they've they've all had from my from my perspective they've all had a good experience. Mm-hmm. Um, because we make sure that we don't, you know, we're not awkward and we're not weird. And anybody that is there, they're not going to be working in my shop for very long. That's I'm interesting. So you, so, so when, you know, like when people come to work for you, because you've actually had quite a few artists work for you over the years, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so you've, so you just set it up in advance that it was just, it's just going to be equality and you know, be comfortable yeah, I, and not, not have those kinds of attitudes, disrespectful attitudes and that thing, that kind of thing. Yes, I do. Know, one thing I, one thing I do not tolerate and I never have is um, it, it's not a meat market, the tattoo shop. That's the thing with the tattoo shop. Um, a lot of people get uh, the line, the, the line with sexuality and all that kind of stuff kind of gets blurry. Mm-hmm. Um people take their clothes off to get tattooed they're exposed you know it's it's very um it's 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 kind of a intimate setting and so i i do not tolerate um if if you date you can date you can date one client a year that's pretty much my (laughs) (laughs) that's what you're allowed you date one client a year if it if it gets to be more than that then 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 you're we're going to have to have a talk because I don't, I don't like the idea of 
people trying to hit on clients or make them feel uncomfortable in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like, like if somebody's getting, like, say for instance, I'm tattooing a woman, right. And then she gets up and walks away. And I say to my friend, Oh gosh, well, she had the nicest bud or whatever, whatever it is that, that a person sure. would say. Um, and then later on that same guy that I was just saying that to, he's, he has a girlfriend and he wants to get, he wants her to get tattooed. He might not bring her to me to get tattooed because right. I was just talking, <laughs> I was just talking, you know, it's really important, I think, to, to be mindful of all those things because it, 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 it it'll come back around in one way or another later yeah. on. Yeah. You know, and especially in this day and age with uh, social media, I mean, you just Ooh. can't do anything. Get blasted, right? For sure. You can't do anything. <laughs> yes, without it getting noticed for sure. Well, I mean, part of my goal in in doing this whole series is to, you know, open up this conversation a little bit more. Um it seems to be a conversation that's happening in the UK and, and even in Canada a lot more than it is here. Um, in the, in, I mean, specifically in the industry, obviously it's happening in <laughs> like the Me Too movement and all of that. Oh yeah. Um, but there's also the Me Too tattoo movement as well, you know, and uh, like I say, it's being talked about in other places a lot more. So knowing that you, you know, you are a shop owner and you know, that there is some responsibility as shop owners that it falls on our shoulders to make sure that the environment is a comfortable place for people. I'm going to actually say though, I'll, 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 you know, say here that I've been in your shop and, and it, it, it was very comfortable for me and, and you know, impressed with how clean it Good. was and all of that. Yeah, for sure. So, um, but you I, know, just, I think it's, go ahead. I mean, I, I mean, it go, it, it's, it's pretty much the, like the fundamental core of, of how you interact with people in just on a day-to-day basis spills over into your tattoo shop and the environment and your clientele. You know, if you're, if you are just of that nature where you're, you're just, you just have respect for human beings. Um, and you, I, and, and none of us are perfect, you know, none of us of are perfect. I mean, yeah. um, yeah, we, well, we all we, make we mistakes learn. and it's just, yeah, if we learn and we're, we're able to say, oh, that's how I used to think, but now I, you know, I'm aware now. And so now I can speak from a different perspective and own up to, you know, just having integrity and own up to our mistakes. That's, that's great. Cause obviously we're not perfect, you know? Right. Right. And, and, you know, um, yeah, like people, people, people develop mannerisms and, things that things that were okay like like here I'll be honest and say when I was when I was younger I I did this smack on the butt thing you know like mm-hmm. to go team you know like right. you know I did it to guys I did it to girls I, I have four daughters you know I've done mm-hmm. it to my daughters you know like yeah smack on the butt you know and um I I did that up until probably I don't know maybe six or seven years ago mm-hmm. and um I did it to, I did it to one of to the people that work with me and uh, it didn't go over well. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly you're stopped in your tracks. <laughs> suddenly I did not do that anymore. Yeah. Got exactly. it. No, yeah. I get it. And yeah, but that's good. I, I love that you just were able to talk about that. Cause it's true. We all have to learn. And I mean, depending where you were raised and how you, who you trained under and everything else, of course, is going to affect where we are and what our beliefs are and what we think is okay. You know, it's just, let's raise the awareness, you know, let's keep educating ourselves and educating everyone else too, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. So do you want to talk about, uh, you know, your shop and and being an owner and, and, you know, kind of where that's going for you right now? Well, um, (laughs) deep breath. (laughs) (laughs) Well, do you want to talk about uh, what recently happened? Sure. Absolutely. Well, if you're open to it. I'm, um, yeah. Okay. It was, uh, definitely super, super difficult to deal with. Um, about five years ago, uh, my ex business partner, 
was accused of being sexually inappropriate with a minor. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, uh, it was, it was uh, his, his ex-wife's um, child. So his um, stepchild. Mm -hmm. When I first, when I, when the, when the allegations were first presented about five years ago, um, I was, you know, in shock, obviously I didn't know what to do. And, um, I said, well, look, we, we got to have a meeting with, with the rest of our artists and let everybody know what's going on. And so we did at the time we had a, we had a shop meeting and, um, let everybody know what was, what was going on. And, and at the moment, based on the information that we had, I mean, my, he's now my ex business partner, um, we were transparent with everybody or he was transparent, told everybody what happened. And based on, based on the story that we got, we believed that he was innocent. You mm -hmm. know, we, um, we, we know, I mean, he's a, he's a really likable person. You don't think just by knowing him, you would never think that he would do anything like that. Right. A difficult and, position to be in for sure it's a difficult position to be in. Yeah. And you don't, and you want to believe your friend, you know, yeah. you, you don't know. Um, we didn't, we didn't know anything about, you know, the, the real story. None of us did. I mean, to, I mean, to this day, none of us really do, you know, it's, it's a situation that happened. Um, the only two people know about him and, and the victim. Right. Um, but at the time he was all, you know, he said also he was being in, investigated by the authorities and um you know what shelly we probably better not talk about this yeah okay That's yeah <laughs> we just cut this part out because it'll just it'll just get too dicey and it's this is probably not yeah i get you is there any yeah. more so like an encapsulated anything about you know yeah we don't even have to talk about this fine what if that feels yeah. uncomfortable to you that's that's cool it probably, um, it probably, it's probably better because uh, my business partner to my new business partner, he's like, uh, um, you know, he's, he's trying to fade the, that whole situation. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, see. he's like, what did you even talk about it for you? I mean, I could just see him right now. Like, well, sure. why even talk about it? Yeah. Sure. Oh, so wow. is there anything on that subject though, that, um, I mean, that's pretty specific to, I apparently didn't happen in a tattoo shop. Right. No. And it wasn't like any of his other clients were saying no, it was inappropriate no, no. with them. No, but on on the on the topic of what we were talking about earlier with um you know the the experience a client has when when you're when you're tattooing somebody and we all know how it goes where you can just say a subtle thing um uh, that comes across a little pervish or you know like sure. oh you've got a you know that tattoo looks sexy on you you could say or 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 oh my god that looks good you know what I mean with a weird look in your eye or whatever you got to really be careful about all that stuff mm -hmm. you have to you have to pay really close attention to your mannerisms and the way you're acting you can't make somebody feel uncomfortable in any way when they when they go to when they go to un, undress you know you got to kind of look away. Yeah. You know, you have yeah. to pay attention to the, where your eyes are at. You have to pay attention to where your hands are at. Pay attention to the things you say, the way you, the way you giggle and smirk. Oh yes. You know? Thank you for bringing I, all of that up. It's so important because I've, you know, over the years too, with, with the people that I've worked with, you know, I have to say something once in a while, like, you know, that's not okay. Um, and you would hope that people could feel the energy or whatever, or like get it themselves, you know, but sometimes as an owner, you have to be the one that says, mm, you know, that's not cool. Or let's not joke like that in front of people, you know, or whatever. Um, right. but I, and I mean, it sounds like you've been very conscious of all of that since you've been a shop owner, which is awesome. Um, but it's definitely not say commonplace that people are that conscious of that. In fact, the, the place where I went to tattoo school, the guy, you know, I mean, his station was full of pictures of naked women, you know, really? and, and it made me so uncomfortable because I was also older when I went to tattoo school and I was also, fre you know, fresh out of college. So my experience was like, uh, 
this is a school. Yeah, this is higher education. What's wow. going on? You know. Um, so yeah, this is higher education. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, and I've heard from a lot of other people in other countries as well as all around the United States um, about the misogyny, about the sexual jokes, and you know, I, I think that people, do, you're, you know, you're just hitting the nail on the head that people just have to be really aware of what they're saying and how is the client reacting. You know, and also other artists that you work with. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking to the audiences, you know, mostly probably women um, wanting to get into the industry. So how do you talk to these people too, especially if they're your underlings or your, their mentor and that kind of thing, you know? Well, I would, I would like to say that there are a lot of good people out there. Yes. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of good people out there and there's a lot of respectful people out there. And I find, I feel like that social media and the news focuses in on, on the problems and would blow them out of proportion and make them and make them bigger than the actual reality of the world. Because the way I experience the world for the most part people are good. Hey, I love that. Yes. People, people (laughs) care about each other and they, and they, and they want to, and they want to feel good and they want to be loved, you know? And from, from my experience, I would say that, you know, most of my experiences are, are people showing up, being careful, being mindful, being respectful of each other, you know, trying not to hurt each other's feelings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we make mistakes here and there, but I, I feel like for the most part, people are good, you know, they're, they're, they're good natured and they, and they want, you know, we, we want the best for each other, you know, and then the stories of the, of the weirdos and the creeps and all that stuff, they, they get plastered all over everywhere and everybody shares them and they blow up and it gives you that impression that that's what the world is. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't really think it is. I don't believe it. You know, I, I mean, I believe, it's, yeah. that, I believe it's out there. Of, yeah, sure, I mean, but, it's out there, and I want to obviously acknowledge and support the people who have had that experience, um, but part of why I'm doing this, too, is to, to, to show the other side, the, the gentler side, I guess, the side that, you know, maybe doesn't get talked about as much, because the people I'm talking to are amazing, wonderful artists that are supportive and, and loving and self-assured, and you know, and diverse, accomplished, and all, you know, and accepting so yes absolutely um but that's not to take away from the people who have had experiences with difficult artists you know difficult right. mentors or whatever um yeah well, I but, would but, also but say- i i, I want to say you know i want to i want to make sure i let people know that there is there are wonderful people out there like you there are there are wonderful people like all of the speakers we've had you know who who are supportive and want the newbies to be educated well yeah and i would i would just say you know just don't 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 settle for less don't don't tolerate it you know don't uh don't stand for it you know if you feel if you feel if you feel like somebody most of the time if you feel like somebody's being weird they are (laughs) (laughs) get out of there because if they're if they're if they're run (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if you feel like something strange, it probably is, you know, um, not always, but I would say most of the time, use your intuition and feel your way through the situation and, and just and just move on, you know, don't, don't stand for it, don't hang around and, and wait for something to get worse, because a lot of times, people that are weird and, and people that are up to something they're you know, they test the water, they, they throw out like a, something gentle at first, and then it gets weirder and weirder, you know, so don't, don't hang around and wait for that. You know, if you, if, if you feel like, if you feel like something's inappropriate or it's not up to, you know, standards, then, you know, use your, use your intuition and, and, and get the heck out of there. Good. You know? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I want, I, words like that are, help strengthen people's resolve to pay attention to their own inner guidance, which is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Because your gut feeling is it's, it's there for a reason, you know, it's there to, it's there to guide you. And a lot of times people will let themselves be talked out of, their initial intuition and find out later that they should have listened to 
to their gut feeling. And, mm-hmm. and to me, I mean, you know, this is, this is the, the spiritual side of me uh-huh. <laughs> that your, your, your gut feeling is, is the spirit world. It's, it's the, it's the greater consciousness. It's, uh, it's that unseen world that's, that permeates all of us. It, and, and your ego talks you out of, talks you out of things you know where where you should have listened to your gut you should have listened to the spirit world you should have paid attention to your higher self however you want to call it yeah yeah no that's good (laughs) you know higher self and you deserve to be respected absolutely for our audience you deserve to be respected you know however you however you choose to get into this field you know that's important so let me ask you just a couple more questions what do you think like would be the most important thing to tell beginners right now who are just maybe like i don't even know where to go or where to start or what should i do or who should i talk to what do you think well i mean it depends on where you live of course because um you know certain areas like oregon you have to go to a tattoo school so Um, that's pretty much your, your only option. Um, one of the things I would, one of the beautiful things about becoming a tattoo artist to me is, um, the, it's an adventure that doesn't end, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Um, and so, and so if I was to give somebody the advice, I would, I would say, I would say, first off, joy you know oh yay for you because it's an adventure that never ends you know to me to me it's like if you if you're doing anything and the adventure stops then that's not nearly as fun so it's exciting the fact that becoming a tattoo artist is is something that you that you will continually find joy in because once you figure out you know first you know how do i get a license in the first place you know where do i get my equipment you know what's the best mm-hmm. equipment to buy you know how do how do i draw a straight line well well how do i how do i get the color and the contrast right and all these different color theory and 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 learning how to draw this and then you learn how to draw that you, you know then I, now i got to learn how to interact with clients and now I, <laughs> so it's like there's so many layers to the process, you know, and there's so many ways that you can, you can develop your skills and become better, you know? So like I said, it's, it's an adventure that never nice. ends. So it's, so it's exciting and it's thrilling and it's, it's something that you can do for, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years. Like with me, for instance, I, like now I, 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 I exercise, I eat a certain way, I get <laughs> sleep, I stopped doing drugs, I stopped nice. doing, I stopped drinking, and I stopped smoking, so I could, so I could be a better tattoo artist, you know, huh. it, it motivated me um, to do all these things that I never thought I would have had the strength to do if it wasn't for um, my desire to like, like when you do a good tattoo on somebody, Oh my God. Man. Right. The, the feeling. The, Yay. Wow. That's so yeah. nice. Isn't it? You know, it's funny. I also interviewed, um, Ivana Belakova. Do you know who she is? No, but I oh, love her she, name. She, yeah, she has a great <laughs> name. Um, she's a huge, huge tattooer and done lots of tons of celebrities and whatever, you know, anyway, one of the things she said was, People think I party all the time. People think I stay out late. I was a little party lifestyle, whatever. But she goes, no, I tattoo for like, you know, 10 hours a day and I focus and I don't drink. And I, you know, I literally want to do the best tattoos I can do. Just like what you were saying, you know, I, well, I want to focus on that. The art, it makes you feel so good. It makes you feel so good. Like I was, I was at, I was at a little gathering the other day we all had masks on just to be yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, the <laughs> time of COVID. Knows. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it was, I was a little gathering the other day and there was another tattoo artist there. And, um, you know, he pulled up his work. I pulled up my work or whatever. And it's, it's, it's each tattoo you do is like, it's like a piece of jewelry, you know, mm-hmm. it's like a, it's like a fine gem that you've created, you know, and, and when I think about all of the years of work that I've done, like, like, like the tattoo I did yesterday took me 27 years of work, you know, 
get there <laughs> to get to that freaking spot you know and, oh so it wasn't an know, overnight cinderella story <laughs> no a lot of, yeah you know? i know it takes a long time right to learn you know to get good yeah and, and then i i also you know i started to notice that um if i like certain foods make my body like slightly unstable you know like i, I noticed that when i when i when I eat a really clean diet, when I get exercise, when I get sleep, when I stay away from drugs and all that stuff, I just have this feeling of solidity and stability in the core of my cellular structure. Mm. You know, so I grab I grab a hold of that tattoo machine and, and I and I hang my fingers out over the skin and my and my needle points are like a rock. Wow. You know, and I and I just guide them and there's almost like this magnetic field that is pulling and pushing the needles back and forth that feels that I have a strong connection to, you know, like, and I can feel it. It's like tangible, you know, oh, but I if love I, that. it's magic. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's something you have to experience and, and you, you, you almost got to go through those days of partying and all that stuff and feeling like shit. Right. So you can recognize the difference of not so, doing the that. contrast. We were talking about yes. that earlier, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you one last question. What okay. are you most excited about now? Oh, geez, I would say the thing I'm most excited about now. Because you said you were is, starting kind of a, you know, co- you know, taking a, I don't know, a, a, a leap into a different area, a different business, or uh, I forgot what you said. I am, I am. Well, well, what I'm doing now is, um, geez, I went, I went through. I'll, I'll make this as quick as I can. I went through terrible things with anxiety. That was, that was brought on by um, um, abusing alcohol and marijuana. <laughs> Just oh, the fun eating. stuff. <laughs> Yeah, eat, eating really poorly and all this stuff. I start, I, my mind became very unstable. Um, it affected my work. It affected my life. It affected my relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my, literally, my consciousness started to dissolve and break apart. The fabric of my reality became scary and unstable. And I almost lost myself. I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to kill myself there, mm. there for a while. It, wow. it got really, it got really, really bad. Um, we don't have to make was, this quick. Go ahead. <laughs> that's a, that's a heavy topic. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it was, it, it got really bad. Well, anyways, what I'm, I, I started to heal myself. I, I did all these things to, um, to better myself. And so now what I'm focused on is, uh, I want to help people feel better in their thoughts, which, uh, which yes. might sound kind of strange, but um, no, that sounds I, amazing. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'm building up. I'm, I, I've, I've got a really nice home, and I'm converting it into like an Airbnb slash small retreat center, where I will be. I'll be hosting classes that I'll be teaching and helping people with uh, the voice in their head, you know, Ooh. and the things, the things that they tell themselves and where does that voice come from and why does it say the things that it does and how yes. does, and how does that voice affect your daily experience of life and, and how can you begin to alter its message, you know, and, and the, cause like the voice in your head is like this radio station playing. Oh my God. You know? So true. And, and what is it, and what is, and what's, what's it saying, you know, um, that, that to me is, uh, where my focus is going. I'll always tattoo, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but I want to, I want to change courses, change the course of my life and start to help people with their thoughts. Nice. And, uh, I've I am been so this- tickled by that, that, that <laughs> idea. That's nice. I'm, you know, it, I'm really surprised at how many people I've talked to who, uh, you know, have transformed their tattoo career to be so much more meaningful and expansive into other ideas like what you're saying spirituality other art forms connection and all of that oh that's what i wanted that's what i want to talk about that's what i want you know us all to talk about so yes changing your thoughts i mean it's um you know i mean shoot even as artists one of the things we struggle with is perfectionism and just always being uh-huh. so down on ourselves and i've yes. experienced that with so many of my students you know they'll do something 
and they're just new to tattooing and they're so hard on themselves. And I'm like, no, it's fine. Yeah. You should see the stuff I did in the beginning. It's fine, yeah. you know? Um, and that learning how to change your self-talk, you know, change the station, man. <laughs> Make it something else. I'm yeah, excited honestly, to hear what you're going to do next. That's cool. Honestly, I think it's the most important thing there is, you know, because life is a conversation you're having with yourself and your thoughts. And if, if, the, if that conversation is, um, is breaking you down, it's stressful, it's full of anxiety or depression, then what is your life? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's filled with, it's filled with sadness and it's, and quite frankly, so many people are telling themselves a really bad story inside of their, Constant. inside of their minds. Yeah. Yeah. Constant. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so, <laughs> that's what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to work on that and I want to help people feel better. I want to, I want to, you know, bring the conversation to the forefront and talk about different ways of seeing your, you know, basically um, artistically, I want to describe the voice in your head in a way that people can visualize it differently and interact with it differently. So. Oh, yeah, you know. that's neat. I like that. Cool. Well, Joshua, thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, so if there are, if our listeners would like to stay in touch with you, um, I know you have a, a, a free digital art print available. You want to share what that is? It's uh, it's an eye. Oh, <laughs> speaking of Everybody all the stuff we're eyes, talking about, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's true. Nice. So for the listeners, it's just uh, just look uh, for the speaker's information on the event page and then just click next to it on the link for the free gift. Um, Joshua, I'm excited to hang out with you and I want to talk to you more in the future, maybe interview you again more on this uh, idea of the voices in your head. I would love that. That would be great. I, cool. I, I look forward to that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. To our listeners, your next interview will be delivered to your inbox. And don't forget, you have access for a full seven days after each interview is released to listen. I look forward to joining you in our next session. Until then, be feisty, stay kind, and get creative.